In today's ThingScript tutorial, we're going to be building a very simple indicator which lets us gauge how many green days versus red days do we have in the S&P 500. More specifically, we're going to be looking at how many green days in a row versus how many red days in a row. The idea here is to help us build a better profile of what tends to happen in the S&P 500 so we know where trends might be exhausting. Now here's an example of the indicator that we're going to be building. You should notice we have four sets of labels along with a histogram chart. The histogram is doing the actual counting here. So the cyan bars, for example, are counting the number of green candles in a row. We can see here one, two, three, four, five, six, and that's where we get this six plotting right here on the histogram bars. Now the labels are taking all of these histogram values and giving us some useful metrics. It tells us, well, what is the average number of green candles that we see in a row? How about red candles in a row? What has been the max number of green candles in a row before we've seen a red candle? And same thing on the opposite side, the max number of red candles in a row before we've seen our first green candle. With all of this information, you have a better idea of what to expect in the S&P 500, and it's a fun thing script exercise. Now along the way, here's what you'll learn in this particular tutorial. You'll learn how to create counter variables. That's going to be a key of what we work with. You'll also learn how to reset these counter variables. In our case, we'll reset the green counter when we have our first red candle. So how do you do that? You'll also learn how to plot histogram values along with how to treat two different sets of variables and maintain each distinct grouping. In our case, we have the group of all of the green candles and the data associated with just that, along with all of the red candles and the data associated with those candles. There's a lot that I think you'll learn in today's video. It's a fun tutorial, and I hope you enjoy it as we dive into writing some code. Now let's get started with our first line of code. Now inside Thinkorswim, let's start by clicking the studies icon, and then we can click create to start writing some code. I'll start by giving my study a name. I'll call it TI underscore candle counter. And let's remove all of the code that we have inside. Now, the first thing that we need to do here is define our green versus red candles. That to me seems like step number one. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll say def green for all of our green candles. And here it's quite simple. Our green candle is one in which the closing price is greater than the opening price. Now on the opposite end, the red candle is the exact opposite, where our closing price is less than the open price. Now here I'm also going to add in the condition of if the closing price is equal to the open for the doji type candle. So that gets classified as a red candle. Now here we have our green candles and our red candles grouped together. Now we can use that information to create our first counter variable. Let's do that for the green candles first. So I'll say def green counter. And now inside of our counter variable, we'd like to start by first checking if our current candle is a green candle. Only then do we want to increment this counter. So I'll say if we have a green candle, then we're going to take this current green counter value, so the value from the previous bar, and to that we're going to add one since we're incrementing it by one. We have one additional green candle. Now, say that is not the case, so we need to now have an else condition. Well, one of the values could be that, hey, we don't have a green candle, we have a red candle. So else, if we have a red candle instead, then we're going to reset our counter to zero. Else, if we are continuing to just have green values, then we're going to carry forward that green counter variable to the next bar so that when we plug it in to increment it, we have the most up-to-date value. Now let's repeat this for the red candles. So I'll say def red counter, and this time it's the exact opposite. If we have a red candle on the current bar, we're going to increment our counter by one. Else, if we have a green candle, we're going to reset the variable to zero. Else, we're simply going to carry forward the red counter variable. Now let's plot this on our chart so we can see what it looks like. I'll use the add chart bubble code, and we're going to plot the green counter variable inside of a chart bubble. The reason I'm doing this is so you can see what this value actually looks like on the chart. So now if I click apply, 
you can see some chart bubbles on our chart and you should notice every single time we have a green candle that counter starts so we start with one then we go to two three four all the way up to six we then have a red candle so that counter resets to zero and the next time we have a green candle that counter starts right back up so that's how this counter variable works for the green and the red candles let's remove this and now we have the counter we can start doing some basic calculations so let's start with the first and I think the easiest one, which is the max value. So here, let's say def max green count, and we can use the highest all function here and plug in our green counter value as the data that we'd like to find the highest value of. I'll repeat the same thing, but for our red candles. So we'll say def max red count, highest all, and this time we're going to calculate using our red counter. Now let's go ahead and output each of these two values inside of labels. So I'll start by saying add label. We'd always like this label to be true, so I'll say yes. Inside of this label, we'll say max green, and here we can plug in the max green count, and we'll give this label a color of green. Now I'll repeat the same thing, but for our max red, and here we're going to say max red count, color dot, and I'm going to use actually pink just so it's a little easier to see. And now if I click apply, we can see on our charts, we have the max number of green candles and the max number of red candles using our two counter values right here. So right off the bat, we already have two labels created, our max values. The only set that we have left to create is our average value. And this is where it gets a tad bit tricky, but it's not something that we can't overcome. So let's go ahead and do that. So next, we're going to calculate the average value of the green and red counter variables. Now to do that, we need to first calculate the total sum, and from the total sum, divide the total number of occurrences. We need to break this down as your typical average formula. So for example, if you had a number set of say, one, two, three, four, and five, you would have to first take the sum of one plus two plus three plus four plus five, and then to that, you would divide by the total number of occurrences that we have. So one, two, three, four, and five. And so you would take the sum first, and then divide the total number of occurrences, and this is how we would calculate the average. We need to do something similar here, but with our actual counter variables. We need to first calculate the sum, and then we need to calculate the total number of occurrences and manually calculate the average. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll start by first calculating the total sum. So there I'm going to say total green candle sum, and here we'll use the total sum function and we can simply plug in our green counter here. Whoops. Okay, next I'm going to create our total red candle sum, and we're going to do something similar, total sum, red counter, and we're going to close this out. Now here we have our sum, but we still don't have the total number of occurrences. How many green uh, counter times do we need to count to calculate the average? And same with the red. If we simply took a total sum of the green counter, we would also include all of these zero values. That's not what we want to do. So let's go ahead and clarify that. We'll say total green occurrences. And here I'm going to say total sum again, except this time inside of the total sum, only count one if our green counter is greater than or equal to one, else we'll say zero. So what we're doing here is we're purposely ignoring all of the places where green counter is equal to zero. Well, when is green counter equal to zero? When in this case, we say have a red candle. We have to repeat the same thing for our red occurrences, which is the opposite, which means that we would have to take the total sum of all of the places where our red counter is now greater than or equal to one. Now with both of these values, we can very easily calculate the average. So we'll say def, average green counter and here we can say this is equal to our total green candle sum and that's going to be divided by the total green occurrences and we can close that out now for our average red counter it's going to be something similar but here we'll say total red candle sum and that's going to be divided by the total number of red occurrences 
Now let's go ahead and plot each of these two out inside of labels. So here I'll create our next set of labels. Just like our previous set, we'd always like to see these labels. Here we'll say average green, and we can plug in our average green counter, and we'll give this the color of green, and I'll repeat this for our average red, and we can say average red counter and color dot pink. Now let's go ahead and click apply and see what we have plotting on our charts. Now we have four sets of labels, just like we were looking for. The first two tell us what has been the max number of green and red candles. And the second two tell us on average, how many green candles do we see in a row? And on average, how many red candles do we see in a row? Now we can also round this to say two decimals, maybe even one decimal, just to keep this a little bit cleaner. So I'll say round to one, and we'll repeat the same thing for our red counter. So we'll say round, and we're going to round this to one decimal place. Now if I click apply, you'll see we have slightly cleaner decimals here. Now so far, all of this is plotting only in labels on the upper panel chart. We'd like to see this on the lower panel using histograms, so it's very easy to go and find the time where, say, we might have had 13 green candles in a row. So how do we go about doing that? Well, we can now create our histogram plots here. So I'll say histogram, and here we can say plot green histogram, and this is going to be simply equal to the value of our green counter. We'd like to see how this value increments over time and how it decreases as well. So we can say plot green histogram, plot red histogram, and this is going to be the red counter. And if I were to just plot each of these, we would see nothing on our charts. We need to first at the top here, say declare lower. So thinkorswim knows that now this is no longer on the upper panel. We want to instead see this on the lower panel. I'll click apply, and now we can see lines. Now this line you should notice has a bottom value of zero and it fluctuates based on whatever the counter is telling us. So for example, if I zoom into what looks like a spike here, you can see this spike has one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven candles in a row, seven green candles. Notice where the spike is. It's right at that seven mark, the candle counter. So that's what these lines are currently telling us. Instead of seeing them as lines, I think it might be a little bit cleaner if we plot them out as histograms, so let's do that. We'll say green histogram dot set painting strategy. And I'll say painting strategy dot histogram. Now we we'll repeat the same thing for our red histogram. So set painting strategy, painting strategy dot histogram. And now if I were to click apply, you should notice this looks, I think, a little bit cleaner and a little easier to read. Now you may also want to change these colors so that cyan is green instead of pink. And that pink always stays pink no matter whatever you might have on your charts. So let's say green histogram dot set default color. And here it's going to be color dot green. And then our red histogram is going to be set default color. And this is going to be color dot pink. And now if I click apply, we have the final version of our indicator ready to go. Now let's go ahead and test this. Let's see how easy is it to find where we had this max green count of 13, meaning where did we have 13 green candles in a row? Now I'm going to zoom out. You can pause the video here. It should be fairly intuitive, but look for the largest green spike on your chart. That should be right here. And if we zoom into this period, you should notice that count of 13. This started March 25th. This is one, two, all the way up, so let's count this out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 10, 11, 12, 13. See 13 on our histogram bar, and we see 13 on our max green candles in a row. Same thing on the reverse side, max red candles in a row. This is 10 red candles. If we zoom out, let's find where those 10 red candles are. So, so far, nothing here, but if I were to scroll all the way back to our beginning, now we're looking for the 10 red candles. So let me scroll through slowly and see if you can identify where that spike happens where we have the 10 red candles in a row. That's right here. Let's go ahead and zoom in and count these off. So starting with one right here, then we have two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. And then we have our green candle. 
So that's how we build a very simple counter indicator, which counts the total number of green versus red candles. It gives you what the average is, it gives you what the max is, and you can use that to better understand the personality of whatever market you're looking at. Here I have 20 years worth of data loaded on. I can simply go from SPY to say QQQ, see that our max red candle count here is a little bit bigger compared to SPY. You can contrast this with say the Dow, you can contrast this with the Russell, you can even come into specific stocks like say Apple, Microsoft, whatever it is that you'd like to see inside of Thinkorswim. So again, through this tutorial, if we recap what you learned, we started with something very simple, just a green and a red candle. But with that, we started to build counter variables. With the counter variables, we could pull out the max, we could pull out the average, and we could actually plot the histograms on our chart so we can see how this has fluctuated over time. I hope you found today's video useful. Take care, everyone. Good luck trading, and I'll see you in the next update.